Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, we're back. Kicking up another fantastic video to brighten your days during these uncertain times with the s Chassis Front Drop Knuckles install video. Now you may remember we recently lashed out and installed some FLCAs to our oh so trusty but oh so clean S13 that we had at the shop. Well, good news for the S Chessy pervs out there that it's back to get rid of the old cut and shut front knuckles that have been doing God's work for some time and upgrade them with the BEA beautiful drop knuckles that we're showing around on the screen right now. Now we do say this in every video, but if you're new here, we can sit and impregnate your soul with my beautiful vocals until the end of time about these knuckles, but to save you some time, if you need to know all the handy dandy bits and bobs and information on these knuckles you're gonna to want to slide on over to the website we also list the whole family in this listing as we have different variations of said drop knuckle to suit different setups starting with the grip specific knuckles which are dedicated to grip obviously because it's in the title the drift grip knuckles for the dudes that want the best of both worlds aka the all-arounder or you have the pro drift knuckle which is the track dedicated super aggressive yet super cool drifting drop knuckle in our case the flavor of choice is going to be the Pro Knuckles, which is what we'll be doing the install of. But the install process itself is the same across all the knuckles. So if you're all set, then let's get stuck into it, shall we? All right, first step is gonna to be to loosen and remove the bolt securing the caliper to the current knuckle and get that caliper out the way. I don't wanna sound like the guy who's a broken record, which I have been for the last 10 years, but a little pro tip we always mention is to zip tie that damn caliper out of the way. Anywho, get that out of the way and remove the rotor from the hub. Get your 13 favorite friends, 19th favorite zapper, and zap off the top nut of the tie rod end. And if you're lucky, it'll come off with a little love tap of the knuckle. Otherwise, and the other way you can do it is by winding the top nut on a couple of threads, putting a socket over the top, and giving that baby a little tappity tap. If you're in luck like we were, the taper will unseat and it will pop off easily. Head up to the coilover mount and loosen and then remove the nuts from the bolts and then slide the bolts out of the coilover mount, leaving one in there for now. In our case, we just fitted up the FLCAs in the last video, so we will be removing the shank with the knuckle and doing it on the bench. So in this case, loosen and remove the bottom nut from the shank, getting it out that way. Now that that's done, there's nothing securing the knuckle to your whip. Remove the top bolt and wrestle that knuckle off the coilover, then lift it off the FLCA at the same time, getting it out of the way and onto your trusty bench. Now loosen and remove the top nut from the shank and remove that along with the washer, then slide the shank out from the knuckle. Rotate the knuckle around, get your largest and most powerful rattle gun to intimidate and show off to all the other males in the room and scare the hell out of the knuckle, then zap the life out of that nut that resides there and simply slide the hub out of the knuckle. Go on and get your replacement GK Tech Nuck, and there's a little knowledge bomb about to point out here that the S14 Series 1 comes OEM with a spindle hub washer, but the S14 Series 2 and S15 does not use a spindle hub washer. There, get it, got it, good. The GK Tech Nucks you can see wobbling around here on the screen have been designed not to use a spindle hub washer. So if you have one, it can be used as a small Christmas gift, a paperweight, and or a tiny frisbee. Anywho, go ahead and slide the hub over the top of the spindle, give it a little spin to make sure you didn't make a mistake on probably the easiest part of the install, and wind the flanged OEM nut. On. Now go ahead and get that intimidating rattle gun from earlier and use the essence of man that that thing is to zap that main nut down. We'll torque the sucker a bit later on on the car because you have experienced wrestling alligators and you are all that is man. You can attempt it now. Give that one last spin to make sure the Goliath rattle gun didn't squeeze your bearing to a pulp and if it turns without crying for help you're all set my dude. Again, in our case, we're going to be using the shank, but if you have the OEM ball joint, you can just plop the knuckle on top. The same rules apply, which is that the taper on the shank absolutely needs to be seated first before anything else. So shove that in, throw the washer on as well, then the top nut, and zap that all down, and obviously tighten and torque to the specs listed here on the screen. Throw the tapered insert back into the shank as well. It needs to be there so we can head to the very brief but very important adjustment segment. Yes, that's right. Wait, is there adjustment on a knuckle? Well, unlike the grip and the drift grip knuckles, the pro knuckles have adjustable ackerman. Oh yeah. 
So as you can see here in this freaking sweet pan, where your tie rod bolts to has an insert that can be flipped to either side. This means that if you set the insert to the outer position, meaning facing more towards the wheel, it will give you less Ackerman, AKA close to parallel steering. If you were to flip that ish the other way and point it inside so it's facing towards the engine, that will give you more Ackerman, AKA less trail wheel relative to the lead wheel. And you would obviously use the top shim that we're showing off on the screen right now to match up whatever location you put the bottom insert into. So pick your position based off the plethora of information and or arguments online and or based off of what your friends heard on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or even possibly ChatGPT and Grog at this point. If you don't have a conclusion after all of that, please go inside and begin a crying session, then email us so we can help. Speaking of help and a handy pro tip for any of the knuckles, but more specifically the pro knuckles, is to make sure that the wheel alignment specs are followed. These knuckles have built-in increased caster trails, so a lower than OEM caster is required. Don't get caught out by this and end up in another crying session because you didn't pay attention or didn't watch the video or didn't visit the website. Now once you've wiped all your tears away and you've learned a thing or two, go ahead and throw the knuckle up with the tapered insert in there as well. Throw the bottom washer on the nut, then tighten and torque to the specs shown here on the screen. Now head on over to the coilover and throw the top bolt in for now and not the bottom. We'll save you some frustration here, my guy, as you install the bottom coilover bolt, then the top. The caliper bolt just doesn't have the room to fit, so leave the bottom bolt vacant for now. Trust us. Now head over onto the tie rod end, slip the top side Ackerman shim in which would be the same direction as the bottom shim, throw a nut on top, tighten, and torque that sucker to the specs shown here as well. Now in our case, we already had cut and shut knuckles and the toe was similar, but either way, you're gonna wanna adjust the inner tie rod end, eyeballing the toe straight as you can while tightening the locking nuts down on the tie rod end, while it's most definitely on the phone to your alignment guy, booking that ish in ASAP. Now I assume your alligator wrestling skills we mentioned up above weren't the best and you didn't torque that hub on by hand, which is fine, you're gonna to wanna to do that now that you have the knuckle actually secured to the respective torque specs listed on the screen right here, which depends on the model of knuckle you ordered, obviously. Head on inward and indent the OEM flange nut down for hashtag safety. Throw the rotor on up along with its friend that seems to hug it every day and wind the two caliper bolts in as we are demonstrating on the screen right now. Zap those two caliper bolts down to the torque specs splayed on the screen and then you can proceed to install the bottom coilover bolt and nut on the other side, holding them from one side and obviously tightening them down to the torque specs we've laid out on the screen below. And guys, can you freaking believe it right now? Not only does this car have sex appeal from the outside, it's now loaded in the front end with the FLCAs and probably the world's best drop knuckles. So it's also sexy on the inside like most of us are. With this thing being low, its roll center and bump steer are now corrected and it can finally handle as good as it looks. Praise the loud. I can almost hear the backies coming and knocking on your door as we speak. Or that could be your engine. Anywho, speaking of dudes knocking on the door, it's these guys. They throw the videos together for you to enjoy, learn, laugh, and love all at the same time, but probably not in that order. And if you don't know what you're doing, then hey, reach out to a professional person that does, and or you can reach out to us. We don't mind. We're always here to help. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and DK with another one of the world's best how-to videos. We'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.